Hey, what's up guys? Brandon here with Cloud Vision Productions. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial um, how to use Rayfire. Um, this is just going to be a quick uh, tutorial for beginners on Rayfire. It's not going to be too in-depth. So if you already have a little bit of understanding of 3ds Max, it should be very easy for you. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a box. And I'm going to make like a wall here. Put this about to the middle. And then I'm going to make the wall just a little bit thinner here. Okay, so we have a simple wall here. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go under the Create tab under Standard Primitives. I'm going to hit that drop-down box, and I'm going to go down to Rayfire. Once I get to Rayfire, I'm going to click on the Rayfire tab, and then you're going to see another little individual tab pop up at the bottom, and we're going to hit Open Rayfire Floater. It should automatically pop up, but mine was on the bottom left corner, so I had to hit the um, square button to maximize it. So we have four tabs here. We have objects, physics, fragments, and layers. The only tabs we'll be using today are the objects, physics, and fragments tabs. So under objects, under dynamic impact objects, uh, this is gonna be essentially the objects that are gonna have um, physics to them. So we're gonna hit add with the box selected my box was already selected, so make sure you highlight your box and you hit add. Then we also have simulation geometry. Um, we're going to make sure that it's selected under convex. And material, you can choose different ones. You have, uh, you know, heavy metal, light metal, uh, dense rock, concrete, brick, glass, rubber, ice, and wood. So. Just for this purpose of the tutorial, we're going to stick with dense rock. However, you can switch to whatever material you like. Uh, static kinematic, uh, kinematic objects, I can't pronounce that very well. Um, that's for, uh, for the physics, I guess, objects to collide against. So for example, um, you can create a plane here and then it will react with the plane. However there is an option under the physics tab where you can select home grid as uh, plain ground so we're gonna do that so first we're gonna go under fragments and then I'm gonna choose a uh, Veroni uniform and then itinerations um, the left side is gonna be about how many fragments you want um, it goes in the thousands pretty much so the higher you go the longer it's going to take to uh, I guess cut up the box into little fragments so I'm going to drop mine down to 150 for the sake of the tutorial it's going to probably bog down my computer if I do it any higher and then I'm going to change the mesh uh, I'm sorry the itineration amount on the right side which is I guess the quality of the actual um, fragments I'm going to drop it down to 50 Actually, I'm going to put mine at 300 for the left side of how many fragments. So I should get about 300 fragments and about uh, out of the itinerations, I guess, of the fragments, about a 50. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit fragment. And then we'll wait for that. It shouldn't take too long because I didn't choose very many. But uh, that is something you want to keep in mind. Um, the right side, so I only chose 50, and that's... I. That would assume the quality of the fragments. And then the left box, the uh, 300, is about how many pieces I should have. Okay. So as you can see, just off the um, just off the amount of itinerations I made, we have quite a bit. So I'm going to switch to wireframe mode just to see. And that's quite a bit. That looks like quite a bit of fragments. So if we went ahead and went under the physics tab and we chose while you're under the physics tab you're gonna go under and then you're gonna see other options it's gonna be below simulation properties you're gonna see home grid as ground I'm gonna switch that on okay so if we went ahead and previewed our fragments we should see them 
possibly fall. If not, we can change the collision tolerance. And we'll discuss that here in a bit. So it's going to take a while. At the bottom left side, you'll see um, it run through its course. And as suspected, our wall is now moving. Because right now we have the simulation in progress. So you should start seeing the fragments fall how you're seeing mine right now. You can even move around on the viewport, take a look. Um, just be advised, <laughs> the more you do, um, the more potential you could have of uh, Ray Fire crashing and 3DS Max crashing. Um, I've done quite a bit of Ray Fire simulations. Let me move this uh, Ray Fire floater. Now, as you can see, that's already a pretty cool effect. It's already just dropping down. Um, you can see the wall kind of collapsing. Um, this is great for like if you're doing visual effects, like if you have something collapsing. But I mean, we're really not going for that, right? Right now, we want collision. We want something. We want the wall to stay intact while something um, collides up against it. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hit cancel on this. And once you hit cancel, since you only hit preview, everything's just going to go back to normal. Pretty simple. Okay. So, back under the Create tab, I'm going to go to Standard Primitives, and then I'm going to choose a sphere. And I'm going to create a sphere, obviously. Okay. And this is pretty basic. You can you can get very complex with Rayfire, and there, there's a lot of different tools. And um, I'll probably go on about those uh, later on in a different tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the zero frame, frame number zero, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit auto key and I'm going to hit set key. I'm just going to scrub it down to at the 60, 60th frame. I'm going to pull it over right straight through the wall and then I'm going to hit set key frame. There we go. Easy enough. You don't have to hit the uh, set key frame. Uh, if you have it under auto key, it'll just automatically do that. But that's just out of habit for me. Okay, so. Wait till my auto save goes through. Okay, so once we hit play, we have the sphere going. Yeah, pretty simple, right? You know, uh, a big ball going through a concrete wall. Okay, so. What we're gonna go do go and do is we're gonna go back to Rayfire Floater. We're gonna open that. Um, if you closed it by accident, you can just go back to Rayfire under the um, standard primitives drop down and hit Rayfire and then just click Rayfire again, and then you'll see open Rayfire Floater. So under objects, we're going to go to the static kinematic objects. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right at all. I'm going to hit add and then you should see sphere 001. So we already have that in play. So if I went ahead and went to physics right now and I hit preview, the same thing's gonna happen. Um, we're just gonna have, we're just gonna see our wall fall down because we need to tell Rayfire that we don't want this wall to be activated through the simulation process until it is activated by a geometry. So what we're gonna go do is under simulation properties, we're gonna hit add again, make sure your sphere is selected okay and then we're going to turn on deactivate static dynamic objects and deactivate animated deactivate animated dynamic objects on so you're going to have these two on I'm totally butchering my speech today so as you can see basically what's going to happen is if I hit play right now if I hit preview nothing's going to happen this wall is going to be glued together pretty much the nothing the simulation process isn't going to go through it's going to go ahead and run through its preview but the wall isn't going to fall down because we need to tell rayfire that once this sphere passes through the activation of the simu i guess the um, dynamic objects will be activated by the sphere if that I, I don't know if that made any sense at all but whatever okay so you can see activate by force and activate by geometry. So we could actually use a wind modifier to activate this wall and it would be just blown away, which is pretty cool. There's, there's different things you can do. 
But right now we're going to be using a geometry, which is a sphere. So we're going to turn that on. So right now we have, make sure you have these two uh, switches on, the deactivate static dynamic objects, the deactivate animated dynamic objects, and activate by geometry. You want to go back up to simulation properties. You want to make sure you have the sphere 001 in the box added. Go back to objects and make sure that under the static kinematic, uh, kinematic objects, you're going to have the sphere added as well. Okay. Uh, the reason why you need the static uh, objects, the sphere added into this selection is because Rayfire needs to know that the uh, sphere is going to be under a simulation property. So if we go ahead and hit preview now, again on the bottom left side you're going to see um, it run through its course. You're going to see it 50% preparing kinematic objects and if it gets stuck that means something happened. Usually it means that Rayfire crashed and it's not uncommon that happens. Especially when you have a high scene uh, with a lot of fragments, a lot of things going on. So you want to always make sure that you save your um, save your project. Okay so we have it running through right now and then the ball, the sphere is slowly slowly moving through and be prepared for an explosion of mass proportions. Okay so as you can see we already see the objects being reacted to the sphere. As you can see as you can see the fragments reacting up against it and then since we have home grid selected as the ground plane it's gonna react automatically to the ground pretty cool pretty cool stuff okay so I'm gonna hit cancel so say for example you don't like the um, Oops, what's going on here? Oh, accidentally hit preview again. Let me hit cancel. Accidentally double tap that. <laughs> double tap. Okay, so, anyways. Um, so, say you don't like the, um, I guess, time scale. Say it looks a little too fast because out, out of 1.0, say you have a big wall, um, you know, for the sake of, I guess, effects. Uh, the time scale at a normal one play speed it just looks too quick I, I don't know why I, I, I'm not a big fan of it so usually I drop mine down to a we'll say a point oops point 45 that's a little bit less than half so we're gonna hit preview again and then you're gonna see it run through creating world adding dynamic objects oops and it's just gonna run through its whole uh, process. 50%, 60%, you'll see the whole process. Uh, keep in mind, the bigger the scene, the longer it's gonna take. So not necessarily if it takes too long, that doesn't mean it's frozen, just let it sit for a while. So we can see the ball, the sphere going through the wall. And that looks pretty cool. Like I, I love dealing, I love playing with the physics engine on 3DS Max, it's so much fun. So as you can see, the uh, ray fire is already corresponding against the sphere, uh, just by the simple, quick uh, features we added to the um, to the scene. Okay, so we know that looks pretty cool. So we're gonna hit cancel, and since we're happy with it, I have the time scale down to a 0.45. You want to make sure while you're doing this, just play around with it. I mean, that's the best way to learn. Uh, this is just a simple tutorial on how to get it set up, and. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit bake, and bake usually means that it's gonna add the keyframes to all the individual objects, um, basically to finalize the um, finalize the physics of the objects. It should it will probably take just as long as the preview, so we're gonna let that run through.
it's almost finished we're at 60 um, also uh, the time range is automatically set to 0 to 100 so say you uh, you have your scene set from 0 to 200 it's automatically going to stay at 0 to 100 so if you want the simulation to last longer uh, I would go ahead and make sure you change the end frame to 200 uh, that's just an example um, that's just a little small tip there okay now we have our simulation completed so I'm gonna minimize this floater and then let's just take a quick brief look at the angles here that looks pretty cool already so you have different uh, you have different fragments reacting to the sphere and since we only have the um, ray fire telling it to react on the certain um, I guess supposed fragments that it collides against, the rest of the wall is going to stay intact. Cool stuff. So if you wanted this whole wall to fall down, um, it's probably essential that you add a bigger, a bigger object, so to speak. And um, this is pretty much just a quick tutorial on how to use Rayfire. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I can cover. Let's take a look here objects um, again we chose home grid as the plain ground again though say for example you have a complex scene where it's supposed to react against like maybe a step or a curb or uh, whatever it may be you wanna you wanna add those under your static and kinetic uh, kinematic objects I can't pronounce that word and let's see so we went ahead and add our sphere under the simulation properties we have these uh, Deactivate static dynamic objects on, deactivate animated dynamic objects on, and activate by geometry on. So uh, this tutorial is running a little bit longer than I wanted to, so uh, I do apologize. But um, yeah, uh, if this is your first time coming across my channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do frequent uh, 3ds Max animations and visual effects and just fun things like that. I don't do tutorials too much, I need to start doing them. But yeah, um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. There are a lot of uh, tutorials on Rayfire out there. But um, yeah, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment below if you have a question. But other than that, I'm out. My name is Brandon with Cloud Vision Productions, and I will catch you later. Peace.